it says replace the force of F equal to 80 Newton acting on the pipe assembly by an equivalent resultant force and couple moment at point A. The equivalent resultant force is going to be applied at point A as well as the couple moment at point A. We have our X, we have our Y, we have our Z, we have the origin. Hey, you know what? The origin's point A, isn't it? That helps. We have a piping system, and all the way out here we have one force. It's 80 newtons, and it's applied to the tip. And they didn't give a label to that point. They gave point B is here. You could have labeled point C. You could label point D. You could label point E. But it, they didn't label it, so we don't need to. But if you wanted to, you could. Two things. So you want to calculate F of R, and then you want to get the right moment, the resultant moment that also... But it's a free vector, but conceptually it's going to be applied today. So how do we solve for that problem? Well, since you only have one force, let's call that F1, the resultant force is simply F1. I mean, normally we have F1, F2, F3, and then we have to add them to get the resultant force. But this is almost too easy, and then you get confused. It's like, what? I only have one force. That's right. You just actually have to take that one force and move it, and there it is. Uh, the challenge is, is to express that force as a Cartesian vector. We need to do that. And this is its representation. That's the answer in Cartesian. How did that come about? Well, it's using these shaded blue triangles, isn't it? And these shaded blue triangles can be extremely confusing, so you have to go slow. If I look at this edge right here of that shaded blue triangle, maybe I color code it red so it makes it lower, is that parallel with any of the three axes? Here's my choice, parallel with X, parallel with Y, or parallel with Z? Parallel with Y, right? Yeah, parallel with Y. You maybe extend it so that you can see it, that it's parallel with the Y axis. I look at this axis, this edge right here. Is that parallel with any of my axes? X. This is parallel with the X. This was parallel with the Y. How about this axis right here? With the Z. That's exactly right. This is a lighter shaded triangle, and this is a slightly darker shaded triangle. One of those two triangles lives in the X Y plane, darker the darker one. That's a big conclusion. And then what about this? This one is really coming down perpendicular. The lighted shade is coming down perpendicular to the XY plane. So now that you really spent some time figuring that out, you, this right here is an edge. It drops down. That's a hypotenuse of a right triangle. They're showing you that that right angle right in there, so I can determine what is the magnitude of the force for that edge and then the magnitude of the force for that edge. So I use my 30 degrees. It wouldn't be, would it be 80 newtons for this edge times the sine of 30 degrees? And then for this other edge, it would be 80 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees. At this point, I have determined my 80 newtons right here. Basically, I have something in the I, something in the J, something in the K. I, I've determined one of these three answers uh, for, for my problem. I, I basically picked off the Z. Z is down, negative, uh, sine of 30 degrees. And then I have the magnitude of 80 newtons sitting outside, right? Okay. Then I look and I say, this must be right here. Um, is this my right angle, my next right angle for the dark shaded triangle living in the XY plane? It is. And so this 800 newton, uh, eight, 80 newton times the cosine of 30 is my hypotenuse. And then this is a 40 degree angle. So this edge right here 
is 80 times cosine of 30, the magnitude of the hypotenuse, times the sine of 40. Isn't it? Yeah. And that is the component in the x. So in the x, I'm going to have to write it this way to fit it all in. It would be the cosine of 30 times the sine of 40 times then the 80 newtons, which I put out front. And then this magnitude on this edge is the cosine of 30 times the cosine of 40. This gives us the f of r. All right. How about the couple moment at point A? Well, this force applied way down here induces a moment about point A. If I go and translate it back to this location where it, it's applied at point A, it won't induce a moment. Hence, I have to apply the couple moment, the resultant couple moment. So the resultant couple moment or mo that I have to apply at A is the moment that the force induces about point A. And so all I have to do is do an R cross F accurately. And this F, we already determined what that is. You can say check on that. What is my R? My R. Is it the displacement from point A out to the point of application of F on my pipe? That's the easiest one, the best one for this problem. It could be anywhere applied along the line of trajectory here of the, of the force, the line of application of the force. But hey, the easiest is often the point where it's applied. <laughs> and so this R, a little bit of work here. How much do I move out in the X? 550 uh, millimeter? The sum of 250 and 300? Moving out in the Y. 400 millimeter and what about in the J or, or K it'll be a negative it's going down how much 200 millimeter in the K and when you do the cross product this is your resultant notice that we moved them got rid of the millimeters so this goes one two three over get rid of the millimeter one two three so it's 0.4 meters and 0.2 meter. Well, with that, I think we're done for the day. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, I'll be in my office.